Uh, my name is Henry Achten. I'm from the Faculty of Architecture of Czech Technical University in, uh, in Prague. Um, and I first want to thank uh, the organizers who made it possible at all uh, to have this uh, interesting event uh, here today. Uh, it was uh, roughly one year ago when uh, Jerzy Rakosnik uh, called me and said, uh, well, there was a, a colleague from the Czech Academy of Sciences, Professor Petr Katerkviel, um, who said um, uh, that they're going to organize the Diderot Mathematical Forum, and he, or he suggested that I should contact you uh, to, to help me uh, with that. Um, and of course, the, the whole event is under the, under the wings of the European Mathematical Society, and the main organizer of that is Mirai Chaliat uh, Morel. So uh, thank you, Yirji, for uh, daring this adventure uh, together with me that we have uh, today. And um, of course, I should also thank uh, our speakers um, today. Um, when they asked me, OK, we're going to have um, a forum about mathematics and, uh, and architecture, uh, I must say I, I was pretty um, uh, intimidated um, because I'm not a I'm not a, math a mathematician and uh, b I'm very poor in mathematics. So I said, uh, my God, uh, how can I possibly tell something about mathematics and architecture? And then I said, well, who is really good in mathematics and architecture? And my first idea was that's Robert H. It has to be Robert H. So Robert H. became my uh, point point for. Together we came up with uh, the next speakers who we invited to, to this conference today. So, and we're very pleased to have Daniel Piker here um, today and uh, Chris Williams. Thank you very much. And of course, I should also thank our colleagues and speakers at the uh, parallel events uh, in Porto and in, uh, in Helsinki. So, I think today we have a very interesting lineup of uh, quite a lot of speakers internationally. Um, of course, I should also thank the staff at the, at the Institute of Mathematics of the Czech Academy of Sciences that they uh, prepared uh, this whole uh, session today. Um, and uh, I, it's even possible to thank the audience for being here today. Um, so my view on, on architecture um, as I said, I'm, I'm an architect. I studied architecture. Uh, I graduated in 1992 in the, in the Netherlands at uh, TU Eindhoven, after which I did my, uh, my PhD. Uh, for a couple of years, I was a postdoc and then assistant uh, professor. Um, I have always been interested quite a lot in the use and application of computing in, uh, in architecture. Um, when I did my diploma project, I was the first one in the Netherlands who used virtual reality to, uh, um, to present his project in, uh, in virtual reality. After the, that, I did my PhD on knowledge encoding in, uh, in drawings, so trying to extract knowledge that architects uh, put into drawings when they, are, when they are making sketches. And then later, I was involved in the virtual reality design inf uh, information systems program. Since 2005, um, I'm living and working in the Czech Republic at the Faculty of Architecture. Um, in 2007, I obtained the title of a docent, uh, associate professor. And since 2015, I had the design studio where we look at advanced technologies in design with our architectural students. And last year, I, uh, I became professor at the, uh, at the university. And my main area of, of interest and research is uh, design research and theory of computer-aided uh, design in, in architecture. So just to give you a little bit of a, of a background, person talking, talking to you. So the topics that I'm uh, interested in from, from my research and that I have been dealing with in the, in the past are uh, knowledge modeling, um, in particular in relationship to sketches that architects make. I have a strong interest in media, so for example, virtual reality. Um, design research is my main uh, background, you could say, and my main interest in, uh, in architecture. Um, pedagogy, how do we teach architects, uh, or better to say, how do we teach architecture students architecture? Um, and in the past, 
about 10 years I'm, I'm looking at uh, interactive architecture. And a little bit of, of mathematics, but always, you know, as a, more as a, as a side issue, not, not as a main, main interest. Now, as I said, when, when I look at, uh, at mathematics, and I'm not really good at, uh, at mathematics, and uh, as I said, it was probably one of my worst marks in, uh, in high school. Uh, so I look at it a little bit as this famous cartoon from, from Sidney Harris, that there are uh, very wise people uh, doing incredible things, um, and something happens where, uh, which is something that I don't understand, uh, basically. Um, and of course, what we face in, in architecture in our field is that there is this perceived distance between uh, mathematics and, uh, and architecture. Many architecture students are rather poor in, uh, in mathematics, they don't really like it, uh, and they feel that it's something like, uh, something distant that doesn't really concern them. And I think what, what we have here is a little bit of a, a labeling problem. So we have a label like mathematics, we have a label like engineering, we have a label like art, and somehow we feel that these are uh, separate areas and they don't really have to do a lot um, with each other. Which I think is, is really a pity. First of all, uh, I don't really see these strong boundaries between these uh, labels. Um, and in fact, uh, in our field in architecture, I think these three should be uh, united and should be uh, communicating with each other. So uh, rather than seeing separate labels of art, mathematics, and engineering, I would rather see them uh, working together. And I think the crucial thing to um, understand these three aspects, at least for me, is designing. That's where it all comes together and where we can make things productive and working and create an interesting dialogue for, uh, for all involved. And this is also my, my background. So I'm really into um, design theory, design thinking. And if you look at that, uh, if you want to understand design, there's actually a lot going on. In, uh, in research and in practice. Uh, so we have design theory, methods, research, design thinking, design cognition, design process, design studies, design support, design generation, design computing, and so on, and so on, and so on. It all has to do somehow with, with design, what design is, and how we can um, support it. And mathematics feeds into that, I think, very easily. First of all, it can be a very good tool of inquiry in, uh, in designing. It gives us a formalism by which we can uh, look at design and describe design. It can also help as a generator of design to, to help us create uh, designs, at least partial designs or support in design. And it can also be the foundation of design support. Uh, very typically, of course, in the, in the area of computer-aided design. Because the moment you have to write uh, a computer program that has to help a designer, then we have to know what we are talking about. Otherwise, you cannot program it. Um, and that's, of course, the point where mathematics uh, plays an important role. Now, I have to put up a small uh, disclaimer when I talk about mathematics. Um, because I, I take it very broad. Uh, I'm, I'm not a mathematician. Um, so for me, mathematics is logical thinking. For me, mathematics is scientific thinking. It is systematic thinking and methodological thinking. An outsider, not, not as a mathematician. So um, a true mathematician could say, my God, you are throwing everything inside in a blender and just mashing it up and it, it looks nice and it probably tastes nice but it's not mathematics uh, at all. So I apologize, it's probably true, uh, so, but this is how I, how I look at uh, mathematics from an interesting, interesting, interested layman's point um, of view. Um, so now I'm going to throw a little bit of a, of a red herring um, at you um, um, because I want to look further about the, the role mathematics could play in, uh, in the design. And that's this one. Um, in the 1980s, 90s, there was a lot of research being done uh, in design methodology about the design process. So what does the design process look like? 
And many, many different kinds of uh, phase models were created. This is one of the most famous by Pal and Bytes, where they very neatly structured the design process um, in steps where you have activities like plan and clarify the task. And then it's described uh, what you should be doing, analyze the market and company situation, find and select product ideas, formulate a product proposal, uh, clarify the task, elaborate a requirements list, and so on, and so on. And then we have uh, a product of that activity, a requirements list, and then we go to the next step, the next phase. And it all looks um, very neat and very well defined, and you could say, well, well there is some system here, um, uh, and basically we understand what, what designing is, uh, is about. Now, I think this was very important uh, that we did that as a community to, to describe the design process, to map it out, you could say. But in essence, it still is this rather mysterious step where a miracle occurs and design is created. Yes, there is no, nothing really there that actually helps you um, create the design or generate the design. Still left up to the, to the designer, to the engineer, to the artist um, to, to do that. Let's contrast this with a different theory about the design process or about design thinking, which was um, thought up by Donald Chun and uh, championed by, by him in his book, The Reflective Practitioner, where he says, well, design actually proceeds in a different way. Uh, what an architect does is first he goes through a naming process in which he says, now I want to talk about these and these problems and, and issues. Then he frames it in a particular way, he says, okay, I, I think about these issues and I want to solve one particular problem or a particular um, concept. Then he moves, which means, uh, okay, I'm going to generate some kind of solution within this frame using these named um, elements. And then I evaluate whether I was successful or not, whether I'm happy or not. Maybe I should rename it, reframe it, and continue in the design process. And this is a model that actually connects much, much closer to how architects perceive their own design process. Which of course is nice, uh, but for a methodologist, everything keeps changing the whole time. So methodologists go crazy with, with a model like this. They say, I cannot really work with that. It, it all changes. I cannot set requirements um, because after the, the next move, the requirements change and so on. Well. I think the, the truth lies probably somewhere in the, in the middle. I think what actually happens is that indeed, uh, it's my conviction that architects actually work uh, more or less in this way. But once you have named and framed the problem, then you can perfectly work a while using, for example, mathematical methods and explore the frame and the problem that you are setting in that design process. And you learn something and maybe you have to rephrase your thinking uh, but in all cases, the design process uh, carries on. And there is actually nothing in this model that uh, speaks against uh, methodological work, that speaks against um, computer-aided design, or that speaks against any more systematic methodological uh, way of working. But we have to understand that for architects, it's very important to remain in this fluid process of reframing, re-understanding the problem, uh, searching different strategies, searching different um, solutions. So what we saw, uh, if we look at, uh, so again, this, this was the red herring because this is something that, that happened like uh, 20 years ago. And in the past two decades, there was a amount of research uh, board. other comprehensive models to constellation of uh, many, many bottom-up techniques. And our understanding of design has, uh, has improved incredibly uh, through contributions from many, many different fields, from design theory, from philosophy, artificial intelligence, from cognitive psychology, anthropology, pedagogy, from practice, from materials research, and, and design computing. Really an amazing amount of knowledge and uh, understanding has been generated. So where we are today 
is that we no longer are looking at the sweeping phase-based models of design. Um, and that in our theoretical understanding, we have moved from, um, from these very important studies like the sciences of the artificial by Herbert Simon through the reflective practitioner to what now is uh, looked at quite a lot, grounded theory and creative practice research. Um, I see many opportunities for uh, multi-agent systems theory to hook up both actors, systems, um, and uh, buildings together. In cognitive research, um, we can see many models and probes into the mental structures that architects use. Um, from uh, anthropo anthropological research, we can see all kinds of research on collaboration modes, work styles, storytelling that plays a role in design teams. Um, we learn a lot from design teaching. How do we teach uh, architecture students to, to become uh, architects? There is a tremendous amount of research uh, being done at the architectural firms, which I think is a very, very wealthy source of, uh, of information. And I think in many cases, the firms are ahead of academia um, in that respect. Um, in many cases, this is connected to innovative applications and technologies in, uh, in construction that actually change the design process. And of course, through design computing and computer-aided design, <coughs> we also see lots of implementation of uh, theory into uh, practice and support. So, but what does that mean? Uh, are we talking about uh, mathematicians? Architects, or should we train a new kind of species called an architician uh, who can do everything um, at once? Well, probably not. Um, I think what is very important to, um, to see is that there are, there are many contributions that mathematics can make to architecture. I think this is without, without any debate. Um, and I don't think that all of us should be good at everything, simply, simply not possible. But we should maintain and establish a dialogue between the, between the disciplines. And for a dialogue, we need a vocabulary and we need a frame uh, in which we can set our conversation. So I, I personally think that design thinking is one such frame and that design computing is one such vocabulary in which we can um, do that. And in this respect, I'm, I'm really very happy and, uh, and honored that we have three speakers here today who, um, in, in their way, are archi architecians, uh, I would say, but um, uh, more they are extremely competent people who have done incredible work combining uh, mathematics and architecture together. So I'm, I'm very pleased that we have them here today. Uh, and Robert H. will um, continue the lecture after me. So thank you very much for, for your attention.